One of the curious things about Australia is that our head of state is not Australian and doesn't live in Australia. If you're visiting Sydney, you probably don't even know that King Charles is the King of Australia. So another new thing in Sydney in 2023 is that the city has a new king. On the day after the coronation of our new king, Charles III, I decided to take a wander around the building in Sydney that connects us with our new head of state and with our colonial past. Since the very first royal visit to Australia, all your favourite royals have stayed or dined in this grand Gothic revival structure. Royal visits to Sydney didn't get off to a very good start. In 1868, Queen Victoria's son Alfred sailed into Sydney Harbour to a rousing reception after a chaotic visit to Melbourne. Sydney's first royal visitor would become its first royal victim of an assassination attempt. The prince survived and recovered right here. His Irish would-be assassin was promptly hanged at Darlinghurst Jail. Sydney got a Royal Prince Alfred Hospital and a Prince Alfred Park. Happily, Subsequent royal visits have been less eventful. In 1954, Queen Elizabeth became the first and only head of state of Australia to visit Australia. The visit was a huge success and she planted this melaleuca in the government house grounds that continues to flourish. Government House was designed by British architect Edward Bloor. Bloor also designed parts of Buckingham Palace. Like our heads of state, he worked remotely, designing this place without ever setting foot on Australian soil. The first governor moved in in 1845. This magnificent Moreton Bay fig is thought to have been planted around the time of the building's opening. Big decisions about the fate of New South Wales and Australia were made within these walls. In 1932, Philip Game, only two years on the ground in Sydney as governor, decided to sack the democratically elected Premier of New South Wales, Jack Lang. Lang, who'd only just opened the Harbour Bridge in the depths of the Depression, ruffled imperial feathers by proposing to put the interests of the people of New South Wales ahead of the debt repayment schedule of the Bank of England. It was our first constitutional crisis, but not our last. In November 1975, the Queen's representative in Canberra sacked the democratically elected Prime Minister. Could it happen again now? I guess so. A few days a week, these glorious grounds are open to visitors. It's a magnificent Sydney spot. Check times because the schedule changes depending on official commitments. Government House is still the official residence of the Governor of New South Wales. If you're lucky, you might get in for a look at the interior. As you enter, you'll be greeted by a gallery of portraits of all the governors of New South Wales since 1788. Some of the rooms, including this dining room that has welcomed many a royal over the decades, are also open to the public. I was told that this room was dedicated to the first king and queen of Australia. That'd be King George III and his Queen, Charlotte. 
I've never really thought of them as the first king and queen of Australia, and I don't think many Australians have. Least of all, the people who had been here for 60,000 years when George III's ships arrived in January 1788. Last year at Kew in England, I had a wonderful time exploring the life of George and Charlotte. This is where Australia's so-called first king, said to have been mad, spent a large part of his long reign. It seems modest even compared to Government House in Sydney. George and Charlotte are enjoying some newfound fame on the back of a Netflix series. But most of the world know George as the king that lost the American colonies in the War of Independence. Back in Sydney and to mark the coronation, Government House threw the gates open to the public and put on a little musical celebration. The Corrective Services Band was brought into play. I reckon Stevie Wonder, Queen and ACDC, also on the set list, would be impressed by the work of our Sydney prison band. It was a little less crowded here than it was in London the day before. Even for a reluctant subject of the Crown, that was a superb afternoon. And if you're interested in history and architecture, I can highly recommend a visit to Government House in Sydney. It's right by the Opera House, the Harbour and the Botanical Gardens. The day had one last history lesson for me. Just outside the gates of Government House is this newly erected sculpture, Barra. It represents the fish hook used by Gadigal women in Sydney Harbour. It was a timely reminder of the people who lived around here for tens of thousands of years before George III was proclaimed Australia's first king. If you'd like to travel some more with Rusty Compass, you can subscribe to this channel. You can also check out our independent travel guides at rustycompass.com. If you'd like to hear more big Sydney stories, including the curious relationship between this country and the monarchy, join us for a walk of big stories and beautiful Sydney places at Old Compass Travel. Thanks for joining us. Travel well and talk soon.